All right, so right now we're going to be looking at some factoring patterns that we haven't seen before, and that's when we have the ax squared plus bx plus c. But for a, we don't have one anymore. We actually have a different number. Okay, so you can see in our two examples, for this one we have negative two. And for this one we have eight. Okay, so it's a little bit different than what we've seen before, but we can do this, right? So let's first go through our factoring checklist. And so if you don't have these memorized, I would definitely say write on on your folder again. Make sure it's there. So first of all, when we look at one of these, what's our first thing to look for that we need to factor? Tacola. Um, asking the greatest common monomial. Yeah, definitely. The greatest common monomial. For this one right here, do we have a greatest common monomial? What do we think? Henry says no. No, we don't have a greatest common monomial. What's next? What else do we look for? Uh, Sam. OK, we look for the difference of squares. Do we have a difference of squares here? No. 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 Nope. That's right. What's next? We have a, another one after difference of squares. Damien. Square binomials. We have square binomials. Is this a square binomial? No. no. Nope. We don't have one. Now, what's next after square binomials? Otto. Binomial pair of factors. Binomial pairs of factors. Okay. Do we have something that we can put into a binomial pair of factors? What do we think? Maybe. Yeah, Aiden, what do you think? Well, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay, so that's what we need to figure out. What will work? for this so that we can actually have our pair of factors. That's what we're going to look at. And the last one that we might look at, if that doesn't work, what's the last one? Kate? Factor by grouping. Factor by grouping, that's right. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And we're actually going to do something very similar to our factor sum tables. So we're going to have our table, just like this. And here is our possible factors. And then on the other side is our possible sums. Okay, just like that. So first, instead of just doing the factor sum table, we're actually going to start by putting our parentheses in and figuring out, well, what is a possible factor that we could do? Okay, so we first look at our um, our term that has our squared on it, our negative 2y squared. What could multiply together to get negative 2y squared? Tacola. Negative 2 and? And Henry? Y. And y. Yeah, negative 2 and y. It wasn't a trick question. Just negative 2 and y. That's a possibility that we could have. Now, what about this 10? 10. Okay. What, what could we use for that? Yeah, Otto, what's the possibility? 10 and uh, negative 10 and negative 1. Negative 10 and negative 1. Sure. Well, let's go through this and see if it's going to work. We need to get a sum of that negative 9. All right, so we know that we're going to get a negative 2y squared. We know we're going to get a positive 10. So let's just look at the sums. So we have negative 2y times negative 1. What does that give us? 2y, yeah, positive 2y. And then what does a negative 10 and times y give us? Negative 10y, okay? What does that give us total? What's our sum here? Ava. Negative 8y. Is that what we needed? Mm -mm. Not quite. OK, we're going to have to try another one. So unfortunately, the trick here is guess and check. There's not a true algorithm to go through to figure these out. We just need to guess and check. All right, so let's try another pair of factors. All right, let's try something else. Henry. Can we do uh, negative 2y minus 1 and then y plus 10 or minus 10? I mean, one of them is right and one of them is right. Okay, we can try it. Is that a new factor that we could do? Yeah, so we didn't change the negative 2y and the y, but we switched up 
the negative 1 and the 10. Totally. Let's try it. Okay, so negative 2y times negative 10 is 20y. Okay, and then negative 1y, <coughs> negative 1 times y is negative y. Okay, what does that give us? Not the right answer. 19y. Let's try another one. All right, give me another one that we can try. Another pair of factors. Kate? Negative 5 and negative 2. Negative 5 and negative 2. I'm going to keep with my negative 2y and y just so that we're consistent. If we want to run out of possibilities there, then we can switch them, right? But right now we're kind of going consistently. So I'll put a negative, um, negative 5 and negative 2. Let's see if it works. Okay. So we have our negative 2y times negative 2, which is negative close, close, not negative 4y, positive but four positive, five. yeah, positive 4y. And then we have negative 5 times y, which is negative 5y. Negative 5y, darn, we don't have it again. We just have a negative y. All right. Can anyone see a pattern that might help us out and give us the right factors? No one want to give it a, sh a shot? Okay, you want to try that? Will that give us a negative in the middle, possibly? It could. It could. Let's try it. Because look, we have a negative 2y, and if we do positive 2 and a, let's see, what am I missing, y? plus 5. That's a possibility, right? Maybe? Maybe? Okay. So we have 2y and negative 10y equals negative 8y. Okay. There's a lot of factors here, aren't there? There's a lot of possibilities. Okay. We are close. We're getting there. We're getting through the possibilities. Okay. Really quickly, for the next minute, I want you to try to work and your partners figure out some other factors that it could be and see if you can come up with this process. This is the process. You guys got it. Let's just try to figure it out now. Okay? okay. Right. A Take a couple of minutes. Go for it. All right. What did we come up with? Did anyone find a solution? No, it's prime. So we concluded that it was prime. Okay. And how did you figure out that this could be prime? So when we were going through all of our possibilities, we weren't telling you anything. We were telling you repeats. Oh. And then and so. so you were finding that a lot of your refractors give you numbers like this, where you have 8, 8y, negative 8y, 19y, something like that. Nobody found a solution? to this? Okay, that's good, because it is prime, okay? But you actually, like, this is a great process to go through, and it's the way you have to do it to figure out if it's prime. You have to figure out all of the different combinations and figure out if the sums will ever add up to that middle term, okay? Any questions on this process before we move to the second one? Okay, good. So, this one is Okay, good job. All right, let's look at this second one. We have 8y squared minus 6yz minus 9z squared. Okay, this is one of those fun ones that has the exponent of 2 in both the bottom and the top of it, in both the 8y squared and the negative 9z squared. Okay, so how are we going to go about this? Can someone give me a possibility for one of our factors to get started? Okay, so we're still doing our, our binomial pair of factors. Okay, so what multiplies together to get 8y squared? What possibilities do we have? Henry, give me one. 4 and 2, or 4y four and 2. There you go. 4y and 2y. And what about this negative 9z squared? What are our possibilities there? 
Auto. Um, positive 3z and negative 3z. Okay, so positive 3z and negative 3z. Okay, let's try it. So we're going to try this 4, 4 y times negative 3z. What does that give us? Negative 12yz. And then this middle term. 3z and 2y. What does that give us? Plus 6yz. So what is our sum here? Henry. <laughs> Good thinking on the spot. Negative 6yz. Is that what we needed? Yes, it is. Yeah. Lucky first guess. That's awesome, actually. So this, this is our factor. This is our factor for that one. Okay. So sometimes it does come on the first try. Oftentimes it doesn't. So don't get discouraged. Right? We have lots of different factors that could have happened there, and only one will work. Only one will work. All right? Good job. That'll be stubborn. You've got to be kidding me. Art starts in three minutes. I know. I mean, she gives you a for like You've got to be kidding me. Art actually starts in three minutes.